What struck me about the story, well, there's a couple of things, and one of them was just Michael Osiello wrote in such a honest, humorous, truthful way that it was hard not to be moved by the material in general, but specifically for me, the relationship he had with his partner, eventual husband, um, had so many echoes of my own experience and life with my own husband. Um, some of them a little uncanny, like we met around the same time and in the same city as Michael and Kit did, me and my husband did. Um, we had been together for about the exact amount, amount of time because of that. And there were just a lot of, I, I, maybe for a lot of uh, gay men of around that age, there'd be a lot in common life-wise. Um, but it was very, very easy without even trying to put myself in his shoes and take that journey that they were forced to go on. In a very macro level, it's about how you have to put yourself out there and, and in a place where you might get your heart broken if you're going to feel the real richness that life has to offer in the form of love, in the form of experience. And, um, and that, in fact, I'm not sure it's possible to live the full life that you were brought on this earth to live without suffering heartbreak. Um, that's kind of the macro story, in my opinion. In specific, we, we look into that macro through the lens of this, um, these two men who get into a relationship and, um, and it's not necessarily storybook. It's it's very real <laughs> and and relatable, and um, and fate throws them a major curveball. Michael is a TV journalist. He writes about TV, and um, and it's his passion. He grew up with TV as a very close friend. He grew up writing fan fiction before I would think there was even a term for fan fiction. Um, and, uh, and work has really driven his life. Um, part because he's passionate, partly because he's passionate about it. I think partly because he very early in life suffered a major heartbreak with the loss of his mother. And, um, and, Due to the feeling of how unexpectedly life can change and quickly and not necessarily for the better at first glance, he is a very interested in controlling things and making sure that he's got control over his situations. And, um, and that makes it challenging to fall in love and start a relationship because you really can't control that other person ultimately. Um, and so when we start the film, that's kind of where he's at. And they, he chooses to take the journey of falling in love and, and the loss of control that that causes. Kit was more free-flowing as an artist and a little more less focused about career, less driven, I would say, than Michael. And, and I think in many ways that was that they, they complemented each other in that way because Michael was, you know, laser focused. Um, and I think everybody needs balance in that way. I know that that also caused conflict. I think that, you know, Michael wished Kit would do more and buckle down more in that way. And Kit wished that Michael wouldn't be quite so married to his job. Um, yeah. And then Kit had, um, a very loving family, and Michael's family was, you know, both of his parents were gone by this point. Um, and, and that was another major gift that, that Kit gave to Michael. And one of the things that in real life and in the movie that Michael thanks him for is thank you for giving me a family. Ben was just a dream to have to work with in general. Um, he brought such a love and depth and charisma to the character of Kit. 
um, I think he shares a similar curiosity and love for all creative arts the way Kit did. Um, I have to tell you for me personally, the greatest gift of all was that he was the right person for the role. And in addition to that, I didn't know him beforehand. It was so rewarding and I think important for this project that we were two people off camera and on camera getting to know each other at the same time that these two characters were getting to know each other. It was Show Walter's very first idea and we were all like, do you think you can get her? He's like, we can try. So we barraged her with emails, begging her, um, and, uh, and she was in. And it, she, you know, they say, <laughs> don't meet your heroes, but it was okay to meet Sally Field. She was nothing, she was everything I expected and, and only additional great things. Um, and, you know, she brings to Marilyn that, that thing she brings to a lot of what she does, which is just this, there's something very grounded about her emotional take on the character and the story. Um, there's a fearlessness about exposing the depths of her pain, um, which she has to do in this film, and you've seen her do in other films in different ways. And um, she manages to be both warm and kind, but very strong and her own person, which was very true to the Marilyn of our film. She's very loving and she's capable of being um, very fun, but she's also got a very rigid spine too a real core strength to her. And um, I don't know, I guess in some ways, now that I'm looking at it, that's Sally in a nutshell. Um, so we're very fortunate she brought that. I have to tell you first off, the Michael Showalter of it all was, that was my first dream come true. Sally was the second one, but I only had that dream because of Showalter. Um, when we optioned the material, we were talking about what directors we would love to have work on this. And the first one we had was Showalter. That was, but we really thought we'd need like a Showalter type because he had done the big sick, which we were like, I don't know if he wants to revisit, you know, it's not that it's the same material, but like, does he want a couple where there's somebody sick again? And, but we were like, his, he understands how to do this. He understands how to do what you might call like a laugh cry. Like he knows comedy and he knows joyousness and he knows the depths of human suffering in his work at the same time. So we were like, well, let, we'll figure out who to, who's like that. And then it got announced in the trades that we had optioned the material. And lo and behold, his office called and was like, do you have a director? We were like, no, why? And they're like, Michael's interested. And we were like, you've got to be kidding. So that, that started that train running. And then we went into pre-production. And I, I said so many times, Michael Showalter must be the most confident in himself director out there because his ability to collaborate, he, I don't know if it's his improv background or what, he never says no. He always says yes and tries it out and sees where it goes. And a lot of times it ends up a no, like, no, that doesn't work. But there was little to nothing you could throw at him idea-wise that he wouldn't see through to some sort of end. Why I think, it, spoiler alert, is important is because it's a, it's a real honest look at the highs and lows of a relationship and the really rocky terrain one just naturally travels in life if you live a full life and, and allow yourself to love and be loved. Um, it's going to hurt. 
And and this may sound cheesy, but it is the kind of thing where in that hurt you realize how fortunate you are to be able to feel. And if you can feel the hurt, you can also feel the elation. And and I think this story is very much about that. I even think in the hardest parts, if you want to call it that, of this story, of this film, I think you pick up on that, that the severe pain is laced with severe joy at, at being alive, at being loved, at loving.